Hello students, a very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to my channel. This is a very important class on Indian English Literature Part 2 and today we will talk about early Indian poets. But before starting, I want to give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Vrishti Mukherjee. I have qualified NTA UGC NET exam in English Literature four times and have also qualified West Bengal SET examination. I have two years of teaching experience. Moreover, I have also taught in NPTEL online course from IIT Madras three times. So that is all about myself. This is the link of my Telegram channel. So those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. And also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel so that many more new learners can join. Good evening, Shupriyo. Welcome. These are the timings of the classes, Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m., Saturday, Sunday off. So don't forget to join me live. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified. Good evening, Nazreen. Welcome. Okay, so uh, uh, in yesterday's class, we have discussed the starting points of Indian English uh, literature. We have discussed definition and we have talked about Raja Ramohan Roy as an Indian writer. So today we will talk about early Indian poets and we will talk about three major poets, uh, Michael Madhusudan Dotto, uh, Manmohan Ghosh and Ramesh Chandru Dotto. Three major poets we will talk about today. So they are the initiators of Indian English poetry actually. Good evening English Net, welcome. So let's start. So the first poet which we are going to discuss that is Ramesh Chandro Dotto, 1848 to 1909 is his timeline. So uh, Ramesh Chandro Dotto and uh, the major other Dotto members, they are important for Dotto family album. The first important uh, anthology in that sense of Indian uh, poems. Okay. So let's start with Ramesh Chandra uh, Dotto, 1848 to 1909 is his timeline. Achha, that uh, spelling D-U double T. Okay, Ramesh Chandra, I think one T is not visible. Uh, D-U double T is the correct spelling. Ramesh Chandra Dotto. So uh, he was born on 13th August 1848 in Kolkata. And he was basically a national leader of the pre-Gandhian era. So he was famous as a nationalist leader. He was the nationalist leader of the pre-Gandhian era. So before the arrival of Gandhi, Ramesh Chandra Dotto initiated the nationalistic impulse. As I have already told you in yesterday's class that during the time of Indian Renaissance, after the Battle of Palasi, there was uh, a kind of interest for nationalistic uh, fervor in Indian literature and also in Indian society. So, Usme ek member tha Ramesh Chandra Dotto. Good evening, PK Learning. Welcome. He was actually the cousin of Toru Dutt. You all have heard the name of Toru Dutt, and we will talk about Toru Dutt also in the next class. So he was the cousin of Torudath. He studied at Presidency College and later he became ICS official. Indian Civil Service uh, qualified karke wo ICS officer bana tha. But he took voluntary retirement at the age of 49 to devote himself in writing. Okay, so he wanted to become a writer. So he resigned from his job as an ICS officer. So that was great thing and he took voluntary retirement at the age of 49 just to become a writer, just to devote himself in writing. Good evening, Rishabh. Good evening, Papri. Good evening, Akanksha. Good evening, Sushmita. Welcome. So that was uh, about his life. Now, he was actually advised by Bunkim Chandro Chatterjee to write his novels in Bengali. Okay. So, but later he translated and uh, he also wrote his individual novels or original novels in English. So, basically he started his writing career by uh, translating two novels in English. Apne hi dono novel unhone English mein translate kiya tha from Bengali to English. He wrote these novels in Bengali initially uh, by taking the advice of Bhongkim Chandra Chatterjee and later he translated it into English. So, उसमें जो नाम आते हैं जो दो नॉवेल्स की नाम है वो है लेक ऑफ साउंड्स 
and the slave girl of agra the slave girl of agra is talking about the mughal empire the time of mughal era good evening reshma welcome so it is talking about the mughal era and uh, these are the two novels which the which ramesh chandra uh, that wrote in bengali but later he translated it into english and he also wrote some historical surveys in english later so usme kuch famous hai a history of civilization in ancient india the economic history of british india this is more famous i hope you have heard this name in your history books the economic history of british india india in the victorian age very interesting india in the victorian age so these are the works of uh, these are actually historical surveys the chronological collection of historical events that was there in these works so uh, that was about uh, his early uh, novels okay now there are some other works also he wrote lays of ancient india here lay actually means verse lay means verse okay so lays of ancient india it was actually a collection of verse translation translation work from sanskrit and prakrit he himself translated these uh, uh, poems from sanskrit and prakrit into english and wo collection ka naam tha lays of ancient india or verse of ancient india okay and very importantly his major contribution in the field of indian literature was the translation of ramayan and mahabharat into english from sanskrit right so he was uh, actually one of the first members uh, in the field of indian english literature jinhone translate kiya tha ramayan and mahabharat from sanskrit to english and this is very important because he actually wrote an abridged version of these two great epics okay so actually the ramayan has a uh, 48000 lines and mahabharat almost has 2 lakh lines so isko unhone translate kiya tha abridged version mein into 4000 lines he uh, shortened the version of those great epics and this was basically for children edition so unhone 4000 lines mein isko translate kiya tha isko abridged karke translate kiya tha the whole epic of this long uh, lines okay good evening sabani welcome and that was very important and in this particular translation the introduction was written by max muller to ye bhi yaad rakhna introduction was written by max muller theek hai and he adopted the locksley hall meter ye question mein aa sakta hai ki which indian writer adopted locksley hall meter actually it is by tennyson right locksley hall is a specific poem by tennyson and he used a particular meter here so uh, ramesh chandra dotto adopted locksley hall meter uh, in this particular translation of ramayan and mahabharat that is why it is very important and um, earlier it was published as temple classic series the uh, first year translation publish hua tha to dono uh, epic ka translation ek sath publish hua tha ramayan and mahabharat in a single collection and that collection is known as temple classics series so that was basically the major contribution of ramesh chandra dotto in the field of indian uh, english literature uh, uh, he was the first person uh, almost the first person to translate ramayan and mahabharat into english and in a so systematic way तो ये आप समझ रहे हो कि इतने सारे लाइंस को छोटे मोटे करके लिखना ये बहुत इजी बात नहीं है बट ही ट्रांसलेटेड इट वेरी वेल एंड इट वाज ग्रेटली प्रेज्ड एंड द इंट्रोडक्शन वाज रिटन बाय मैक्स मुलर गुड इवनिंग शुभास वेलकम सो नेक्स्ट क्या है नेक्स्ट जो है वो है दोस्तो फैमिली एल्बम दैट वाज द अर्लीएस्ट कलेक्शन ऑफ a uh, purely indian english poems that is why it is very important dotto family album published in 1870 so basically it is a collection of 187 poems written by not ramesh chandra dotto but the brothers of ramesh chandra dotto like govind govind chandar dot pur chandar dot and umesh chandar dot so in tino ne milkar ye collection likha tha dotto family album published in 1870 so it is a collection of 187 poems so you can understand it's a massive collection right and all the poems are written in purely indian english format so very important and very interestingly two poems are dedicated to william wordsworth two poems tha wordsworth ke upar uh, inside that family album some of the poems are also historical 
like the death of Muhammad Khori, Jahangir's lament, etc. Talking about the Mughal Empire, talking about the Sultani uh, uh, era of Indian history. So, kai sari important historical events or major historical persona ke upar poems based tha. And all these poems are written by three Dutta brothers, Kovind uh, Chandar Dutt, Hur Chandar Dutt and Umesh Chandar Dutt. Okay, so remember that, that was about Dotto family album. Okay, so that is about Ramesh Chandra Dotto, the very important uh, writer. So, in the early Indian poets, I miss a detailed question, but the titles, the titles of the major works, these are important. Okay, so minor question as a ki Dotto family album make it sare poems, right? So, these kind of questions may come. So that is why I am telling you these writers, but these are very minor writers in that sense, uh, minor in that sense that they are not discussed uh, later um, uh, in uh, a massive or grand scale. So, jo major poets sam jante hai, Indian English literature mein usme Turudat ka naam aate hai. And also we know Nizim Ezekiel, uh, we know Sri Aurobindo and others, but these are the early Indian poets who initiated kiya tha. The publication of Indian uh, literature and Indian uh, poetry specifically. Baad mein hume milta hai poets like Jayanto Mahapatro, like Kamala Das, who are major poets and jiske work se bahut question aate. But these are the minor works, uh, to bahut hi kam details hai, but important. Okay, yes. So chal. Next author pe aate hai Manmohan Ghosh, 1869 to 1924. He is also a poet, Manmohan Ghosh, early Indian poet, 1869 to 1924. So, what about the biography of Manmohan Ghosh? He was born on 19th January 1869. And uh, Manmohan Ghosh, again, G H O S E Hoga. Okay? Manmohan Ghosh, uh, 1869 to 1924, and he was born on 19th January 1869. He was actually the elder brother of Sri Aurobindo, who was a major poet. Sri Aurobindo Savitri uh, was the uh, most important work. Just a question, Banta. We will also talk about Sri Aurobindo. Okay. So he was the elder brother of Sri Aurobindo. He studied at Manchester Grammar School and St. Paul's School in London. So he was educated in Western fashion and his most important work is Prima Vera, a subtitled as a poem by four authors, published in 1890. So it was basically his debut poem and it was written uh, in collaboration with four authors. So very importantly, we see two authors in the other hand, but there are four authors in collaboration. Hai. So his name is Lawrence Binion. Arthur Cripps, Stephen Phillips and Monmohan Ghosh himself. So he is the only Indian baki sare ke sare British people hai. So sab ne collaborate karke ye likha tha. Prima Vera, a poem by four authors and very importantly it was greatly praised by Oscar Wilde in a review. Oscar Wilde ne isko praise kiya tha. This novel Prima Vera, it is almost an epical tale. Okay. So uh, Oscar Wilde praised this in a review. And uh, he has written some other works like Love Songs and Elegies. It is a collection of poems. Okay? And this is the famous work. Hai, Parsias the Gorgon Slayer. Parsias the Gorgon Slayer. It's a massive epic in blank verse. But it was left unfinished. Only six books were completed. Maximum unhone jo works likha tha, jo epical works unhone likha tha, uh, wo sab unfinished hi raha. And like his brother, he was also greatly inspired by myths and legends of India. Just uh, Sri Aurobindo ne likha tha, Savitri, the life divine, the greatest philosophical works uh, written ever. So he was also inspired by those uh, tradition, those philosophy, Indian philosophy, Indian history, Indian myths. Okay. So, but wo apne works ko complete nahi kar paaye. So Porcius the Gorgon Slayer, a very major work, but it was not completed. Only six books were completed. Next work is Nolo and Damayanti. Nol uh, and Damayanti, the famous mythical story you have heard. So it is an unfinished poetic play. Poetic play but unfinished. Again, another work, Adam Alarmed in Paradise. It was also another epical work and it was inspired by the lines of the dynast. And you all know the dynast was another uh, major epical poem by Thomas Hardy. Right? So dynast say ye inspired 
ठीक है फ्रॉम द लाइन्स ऑफ डाइनस इट वॉज इंस्पायर्ड एडम एलर्ड इन पैराडाइज ओके गुड इवनिंग विकास वेलकम तो और क्या है उनके वर्क्स में दीस आर सम ऑफ द सोनेट सीक्वेंसेस बस आप टाइटल को याद रखो इमोटल लव ऑर्फिक मिस्ट्री सॉन्ग्स ऑफ पेन पैशन एंड मिस्ट्री दीस आर सोनेट सीक्वेंसेस एंड ये जो उनके कलेक्शन है पोएम का सॉन्ग्स ऑफ लाइफ एंड डेथ दैट वाज ग्रेटली प्रेज्ड बाय डब्ल्यू बी इट्स ओके सो ही वाज सच एन इंडियन पोएट हु रिसीव्ड Uh, so many praises from the classic British writers also, right? Like uh, W. B. Yeats, like Oscar Wilde, whom we uh, uh, discussed uh, from an elevated position. So, ये सारे के सारे authors ने poets ने इनको praise किया था. Monmohan Ghosh, the elder brother of Sri Aurobindo Ghosh. So, दोनों major works से उनका Perseus, the Gorgon Slayer, and Nolo and Damayanti, but both are unfinished. Yes, right. Shubhru Dynasty is a closed drama. Uh, good evening, Cherry. Welcome. Yes, poetic drama. Okay. So next time, आते हैं and the last poet of today's class. He is important among the early Indian poets. Michael Madhusudan Dutt, eighteen twenty four to eighteen seventy three is his timeline, and he is a very famous a uh, Bengali poet also in Bengali literature, and he is also famous as an English poet. Michael Madhusudan Dutt. Okay, and you all know that uh, we consider Michael Madhusudan Dutt as the father of Bengali sonnets, and he particularly popularized uh, the uh, the rhyme scheme called Omitrakthor Chondo in Bengali. So he was considered as the father of Bengali sonnets, and he was also a great English poet. So early Indian poets, me, uh, Michael Madhusudan Dutt and Dirozio, these two are very important. Dirozio, we will talk about in tomorrow's class. Today we will talk about Michael Madhusudan Dutt. Yes, Captive Lady, right? Should be the major poem in English. So Michael Madhusudan Dutt was born on twenty fifth January eighteen twenty four at Jashore district in Bangladesh, and he was greatly influenced by his teacher David Lester Richardson. Okay, he was disinherited by his father and he moved to Madras. So actually, uh, Michael Madhusudan Dutt started writing in English, but later he realized that he was depriving uh, his mother tongue or motherland. So he again went back to uh, Bengali writing, and after that he wrote so many works in Bengali, and he was a great poet in Bengali uh, literature. Right. So उनके जो early works था वो English में था, but later he uh, lamented all these things. Later he lamented that he wanted to get name and fame by writing English works, but actually he was depriving his motherland. He was depriving his mother tongue in the famous Bengali poem called Atto Bila. Okay. So uh, that is why he has not written so many works in English, but yes, some of the works are important, as you have said. Yes, Meghnath Bodh Kapo very uh, important in Bengali literature. Yes, Dirozio was a member of Young Bengal movement, right? So yes, Captive Lady is the most important. Hai. So we will talk about that. First of all, his biographical details. He became a tutor in Madras University High School. He was greatly inspired by Lord Byron, the most notorious uh, romantic poet, right? And as I have already told you, he was the father of Bengali sonnets, mainly famous as a Bengali writer. And ये एक famous quotation है जो श्री ओरोबिंदो घोष ने कहा था उनके बारे में कि uh, God Himself took up thy pen and wrote. He praised uh, Michael Madhusudan's talent and he uh, wrote this thing about him that God Himself took thy pen and wrote. Yes, he took Christianity, and that is why uh, he was disinherited. And after um, Christianity, after taking Christianity as a religion, उन्होंने Michael रखा था अपना नाम, right? That is why he was inherited. Uh, sorry, he was disinherited. Good evening, Jyoti. Welcome. So Aurobindo Ghosh talked about him. God Himself took up thy pen and wrote. And as you have also said, it, he was very famous for his epic Meghnath Bodh Kap. Okay. So now uh, we will come on to his English writing. So yes, Captive Lady is a very famous poem, and it was inspired by Byron. So Captive Lady का क्या plot है? Again, it is talking about a mythical story. It is talking about the Rajput king Prithviraj Chauhan, who abducted Kanauj king's daughter Sanjukta. 
तो द फेमस लेजेंडरी स्टोरी बिटवीन पृथ्वीराज एंड संजुक्ता वही यहाँ पर मेंशन है तो राजपूत किंग पृथ्वीराज हु एब्डक्टेड कनौज किंग्स डॉटर संजुक्ता The king of Kanauj is against this marriage, so he plans with Muhammad Ghazni to kill Prithviraj. Okay, so he was against me, tha, so he was planning to kill Prithviraj. Ko ke liye. Finally, Prithviraj died at last, and actually he was killed by Ghazni. But uh, Michael Mudushudan Dotto has interpreted the story as both Prithviraj and Sanjukta commit suicide by mounting on funeral pyre. So ending me thoda sa change kiya hai. मधुसूदन ने कि एक्चुअली हिस्ट्री में ये था कि महमूद गजनी किल्ड पृथ्वीराज वी हैव यू हैव ऑलरेडी इन हिस्ट्री बट इन हिस पोएम मधुसूदन दत्तो रोड दैट एक्चुअली बोथ ऑफ देम कमिटेड सुइसाइड बाय जंपिंग इनटू अ फ्यूनरल पायर एंड दैट रिमेंड एस अ ट्रैजिक लव स्टोरी बिटवीन पृथ्वीराज एंड संजुक्ता � so the Athenium, the famous British magazine, declared the poem content passages which neither Scott nor Byron would have ashamed to own. So that is how he, uh, the Athenium declared the poem. So in the works, visions of the past, it is a Miltonic blank verse work and it is talking about the Christian themes of temptation, fall and redemption. So Bible may be told in the Bible. Uh, he is also saying here visions of the past. Next work is Padmavati. It was uh, based on a Greek myth and is used blank verse for the first time. That is why very important in Indian English literature. For the first time, uh, Michael Mudushudan Dotto used blank verse in this work Padmavati. So these are the minor details which are important. Hai. So that is about his English work. English work is very hai. Bengali works are very sare hai. But we will read him uh, as an English uh, poet. So English mein unke sabse famous work hai Captive Lady. Otherwise, unhone ye kuch epical uh, works rekha tha based on Christian themes and Greek legend. Okay, so that is about today's class. Thank you all for joining. This is the link of my Telegram channel. Those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. So next class will be tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. And tomorrow we will talk about some other ma uh, major early Indian poets. Jisme hum baat karenge Toru Dutt ki. We will also talk about uh, the other poets like Dirozio. Okay, so don't forget to join me live. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notification. Okay, so thank you all. Bye-bye everyone. Good night. See you all tomorrow at 8.30 p.m.